So uh, today we have a special guest, but before unveiling our special guest, I will you know, allow you to introduce yourself, then we continue from there. Well, I, I would have always taken the pride of uh, not just introducing myself, but then also uh, introducing the special guest here. Yeah. Um, by the way, I am Mohamed Bibaj, and I am really glad to be here and to take up your role for now. And before we can kick on the conversation here today on Africa in Sports, um, a conversation that everyone is uh, really um, thrilled to listen to and understand what is happening from here. I present to you, uh, Mr. Greetings, viewers, and welcome to another exciting episode of Africa in Sport here on African Renaissance TV Network with me, Mohamed M. Sediba, and of course with my co host, Mohamed B. Bayi. So, uh, today we have a special guest, but before unveiling our special guest, I will you know, allow you to introduce yourself, then we continue from there. Well, I, I would have always taken the pride of uh, not just introducing myself, but then also uh, introducing the special guest here. Yeah. Um, by the way, I am Mohamed Bibaj, and I am really glad to be here and to take up your role for now. And before we can kick on the conversation here today on Africa in Sports, um, a conversation that everyone is uh, really um, thrilled to listen to and understand what is happening from here. I present to you uh, Mr. Amadou Tamba. Um, Mr. Tamba, welcome on board today. Thank you very much, um, and uh, it's a pleasure to, of course, uh, join you guys on this uh, platform today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. But then you should have wait for me to do my intro. It's, well. not, it's not your responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, today we'll be discussing on you know important areas. You know we we'll discussing on African games. Of course, you know the Gambia have participated in you know a range of activities that are, that happens at the African games in Accra. And also we will discuss on the you know the division two league. Of course, uh, the Gambia Deadline focusing on the Gambia Deadline FC. And to, just to remind you, this program is being sponsored by the Gambia Deadline Consortium. The Gambia Deadline Consortium. And then surprise. We are having here the you know the communication officer and of course the media officer of uh, the Gambia Deadline Consortium. So uh, now we will start by the you know going through the African games you know that happens in Accra. You know Amadou Tamba, you were fortunate to be you know you know to, to witness the participation of the Gambia athletes. You know you know a range of athletes in different fields, different you know sporting activities ranging from you know football, athletics, you know taekwondo, and also you know other different areas, other different sporting events. You know how was this activity? How 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 did it went in, in Accra. Well, um, thank you very much, uh, Sediba. I think um, it was really um, a very, very uh, great competition. Um, not only football, athletics, um, taekwondo, um, basketball, volleyball, and then uh, handball, tennis as well. But um, for the Gambia, we participated in a few of those categories. We uh, took part in football. We took part in volleyball, that is both the beach and uh, the indoor. We also took part in uh, athletics and uh, taekwondo as well. Mm -hmm. So it has uh, not been a very, very good one. But uh, thank God we came back with uh, two medals, um, both uh, gold. Um, let me start with football because that is where so many Gambians were having the uh, focus of uh, the uh, boys on the 20 side, um, guided by Abdullah Bujang. When he was preparing the team for the competition, there has been a lot of talk as to uh, some good players left back home, um, some players in the team that did not merit being in the team. But at the end, it's, it's coaches who train players. Um, not what the fans see. At times, coaches see beyond what the fans are seeing. Mm -hmm. And Abdullah Bojang put up a team of uh, 23 players for the competition. Gambia went there. We were in the uh, same group with Ghana. We were in the same group with Benin and Congo. Our first test was against Benin. Mm -hmm. um, you look at the team, it was 95% um, of inexperienced players. Mm -hmm. Inexperienced players per se, um, that 95% of those players have never played um, an international competition. So playing in such a competition in Ghana was the first time. But five of those players who were part of the previous under 20. That is, of course, the captain, uh, Mamoudou Ba, um, Ibrahim Ajayte, one of the goalkeepers, Yukase Sanyang, another goalkeeper, um, Ismail Amane, who plays for Steve Biko, and then uh, Mansur Mbai. Those were the only five who tested under 20 football previously. But um, in experience uh, count, the first game, the team played very well. Again, uh, Benin crafted so many chances, we were unable to score. We also kept a clean seat. Benin were unable to score as well. It was a nil-nil draw. And then going into the second game that was against the host nation, Ghana, um, it was really going to be a difficult game. The coach, one, yeah, the coach knew that. The part, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, the coach knew that. and. Um, he prepared his boys well. Um, going into the game, the team started well, 
but you know in football little details at times cost you and exactly that was what cost the Gambia mm -hmm. um, we made some costly errors and uh, Ghana capitalized and uh, scored um, at some point when we came back into the game 2-1 looking forward to uh, get the second equalizing goal Ghana scored again got to have another mistake mm -hmm. and we lost 3-1 um, now we have one more games to uh, rejuvenate ourselves that is of course get a win and get to the next round it was another difficult game because Congo also knew that um, a defeat would put them out of the competition mm -hmm. so they were also well prepared um, took the game to Gambia Gambia also took the game to the Congolese we scored the first goal and we thought that yes uh, we will get our place in the uh, semi-finals but it was absolutely a difficult one in the second 45 mm -hmm. Congo came all out and get the equalizing goal and again we talked about mistakes in the game against Ghana mm -hmm. the same mistakes happen um, in this game against Congo and then we considered a last minute goal and that was the end for us that was absolutely the end for us and uh, we could not manage to get to the semi-finals because it was direct qualification to the semi-finals eight yeah. teams four in this one four in this two will be eliminated from the group phase and then direct semi-finals and then the finals but it was unfortunate um, on the side of football yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a good rundown of the football you know and there and then you know we'll come back to other other athletes other, other activities that the Gambia participated on but then before that uh, you know, talking about the experience, you know, the Gambia played, you know, in the, you know, like he said, you know, most of the players there were inexperienced, you know, in, inexperienced like he mentioned, you know, but then, you know, how important was their participation in these African games important for their career as footballers? Well, it's, it's been an impressive um, roller coaster, um, like, uh, and, uh, from the summary that as we've had um, from Amal Tamba, it has been um, an impressive one. I think he really did um, justice to um, that, uh, to give us a baseline of actually starting our conversation. Mm -hmm. But, Coming to experience, I think um, the Gambia, even though with the sporting, especially um, on football, we've not uh, come with any um, any medals, especially gold, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, which is sad to have a witness. We would, it would have been amazing um, for the first time for many of those boys mm -hmm. um, to have had um, a silver or something to come home with, and that would be. But then, other than that, I wouldn't call it um, a total loss for the Gambia. I think when you look at, um, like he said, apart from the five that had previously tested international competition and um, the range of other players that had participated in this it uh, that valuable experience that they have come home with is that important mm -hmm. and then um, the court who has now seen um, witness and seen a lot of footballers that for the first time they've not had enough uh, to get a train but then that experience counts and then going forward this will really inform not just our decisions as uh, sport lovers mm -hmm. as um, stakeholders in football but then the footballers in fact when they come back to their respective teams I think we will see um, a lot more quality from the divisional teams in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. uh, most definitely, like, uh, you know, looking at the previous, the previous, you know, achievements of like Bojang, you know, with the under 20, the previous achievements were very good, you know, you know, starting from, uh, you know, the, the, the World Cup, you know, the, the World Cup, and then also the Wafu, you know, the Wafu James, and of course the World Cup, they played really well in those, in those games, you know. But then in this other competition, we've seen, you know, we've only come home with only a point. You know how, how 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 do you react to that? Well, well for, for for a result, I'm mean, looking at the results component. It was it was uh, very 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 poor. Uh, we we cannot shy away from that. I mean, with the experience of the coach, we would have expected more. Um, even though well, he can there could always be some challenges beyond the pitch. Sometimes that happens. Um, like in experiences that that valuable in it, but then it couldn't have been the only thing that really held us behind. And I think tactically we should be able to because in competitions like this, you know, um, coaches don't really have enough time to put forward all your tactical um, disciplines in football. So I think that is where also coaches um, also differ. You know, if I have little time with players, but then what can I give them information wise? Um, that they can consume and implement within the short duration is that important mm -hmm. so for me um that was a disappointment um, from the coaching staff um, in that regard so uh, mr tamba uh, do you think you know left leaving some uh, some players that were doing very well in the you know the border force and in the second division was a uh, you know was was that was a problem for us in the in african games well, I followed um, Under-20 for quite a long time and uh, going into this competition, I've said this um, over and over, that uh, these players who are selected absolutely have a very big tax, um, a big tax in the sense that the previous Under-20s have set the bar so high. Yeah. So um, these players absolutely know that they have uh, very big boots to fill. Mm -hmm. um, can they, uh, will they do that in uh, Ghana? That's the question mark. And then just coming back to your question, yes, there were some of the players left behind that um, a lot of guys Gambians believe could have done a good job in the team mm -hmm. and yes I believe there were some of the players um, who did not make the uh, list um, if they had been there they could have added something to the team mm 
but once again it comes back to selection um, when it comes to selection I can be a very good player um, for my club but when it comes to the national team it depends whether I will fit into the system that the coach who have yes who the coach handling the national team um, has uh, a philosophy whether I will fit into that uh, philosophy whether I will fit into that system that's why at times most of the better players are left behind when it comes to certain selections and after those games uh, he had the opportunity of engaging the coach himself and he agrees to the fact that yes um, the team needs reinforcement because I believe um, what I was looking at is like he took these African games as an experiment sure. to look at more players what they can do at international competition because we also need to remember that there are some other players who are professionals right now they are within the age bracket of under 20 they can still play for the under 20 but they were, but, not, but they were not called up even if they're called up uh, their clubs will not allow them to come because it's not a FIFA window sure. so it's down to the coach to give other players the opportunity okay. and see what they can do at the international stage we have few months to go before we go into the waffle competition in Liberia so now um, it's down to the coach whether the players who got to uh, Ghana are still capable of maintaining their places once we are going into the Wafo competition because we have other players coming in and we also have better players um, absolutely doing very well in the league we are still looking at them giving them a second chance or a third chance they can still uh, be molded and integrated into his system um, of uh, philosophy and his way of football in the under 20 side so yes I agree there are some of the players left behind I believe when we are going into the Wafo competition you will see some of those players coming and even made mention that he has about 30 to 35 players that he needs to come back into the Gambia look at them again train with them and see how well they fit into his system before he makes a selection to the Wafo competition Indeed. so absolutely yes there are some that's, of the players now yeah. you know uh, before moving on to the next sports that the Gambia participated in you know you, you 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 have two of your players in the in the under 20 how proud how proud was you where where are you you know when the finalists were were released yes um, I was happy for the Gambia one I was happy for them as well and I was happy for the club um, happy for them in the sense that these are the players that since I started working with the Gambian Dutch Lions I've spotted their, their brilliance and I've spotted their hard work and I've spotted their determination to go far in the game um, for instance Usman Kamara the first day I met him I had an interaction with him and he was like look I am a young kid and I, I dream big I want to uh, absolutely go as far as I can in football and I was like if you keep it tight and work very well mm -hmm you will absolutely get there. Mm -hmm. And you can understand that at Dutch Lions, he was not even a regular starter. Sure. He was not even a second choice. He was a third choice. Third choice yeah. And once the first choice and second choice had issues with injury and stuff, he started. And even within their chart, he will tell them that, look, if you guys are not careful enough, if I start, you have to sit and wait for me. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. Um, having a young goalkeeper as him, he's just 17. Um, having about nine to 10 clean seats in the second division is up absolutely not by fluke it's due to hard work mm -hmm. and he made mention of um, of course uh, the, the family at Dot Lions because um, the first choice goalkeeper even though he's not playing but he has the experience of uh, once playing for the under 20 mm -hmm. so he always advised him and Usman is always ready to listen and learn Definitely. and as a young player that is key in your development mm -hmm. so I was I was not surprised to see him uh, selected into the uh, Gambia under 20 Definitely. and Definitely. I was between Usman and Pio is, Pio, you know, absolutely is really absolutely and Alaji is a top notch so, it's a top so, notch and then, and then see Mm -hmm. The first day I went to the Gambian Dutch Lions uh, preseason, mm -hmm. I looked at him once, twice. I was like, "Yes, this is the kind of winger that every coach wants." Mm -hmm. When you get the ball, the first mentality is to go forward. Okay. He hardly, hardly go. goes back with the ball. He either play a forward pass or he beat pass his marker and go forward that is exactly what you want in modern day football and I was like yes this kid has the attributes of playing as far as um, the national teams and I was absolutely not surprised uh, to see him selected into the uh, under 20 when the list came out and I saw his name I was like yes um, it, it was not a coincidence I believe he worked for it and the coaches at Gambian Dutch Lions also really helped him progress because it's a project that the coaches are absolutely doing very well to bring in young players and try to uh, of course mold them
and promote them to becoming uh, top quality um, in the Gambia, Africa, and the world at large. So I was not surprised that we have two players in the uh, under the 20. Usman and Sima, they are yes. great players that we should look at for. You know, we've talked about Usman here, you know, for some time. You know, you know, what's your what's your reaction to us? Well, I, I will just have to reiterate uh, what I said before. Um, that Usman is um, one of my favorite footballers. I mean, for a goalkeeper of uh, his caliber, I mean, for his age and then uh, the club he's playing for. Usman is a, a man, manager's dream in modern day football. You want um, that goalkeeper that can not just be a short um, stopper, but then good with his feet. Yes. Usman becomes uh, like a, that last defender of uh, ever, ever the, the team. He he's so bold in and then now he's that outspoken. Mm -hmm. When you look at his communications in the field, you know, okay, for his age and then the people that he's able to command because as the goalkeeper, you see barely everything in the field. Mm -hmm. So being that communicative is that really important. So I think he, he still has a, uh, the sky is the limit for this man. Well, football is, you know, it's, 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 you know talking about football is really Absolutely. Bad, but Absolutely. Is, you know, the next, uh, the next Absolutely. Now, uh, the Gambia won, you know, two hours from the African James, you know. You know, we, we've seen Jinabas, you know, Jinabas winning, you know, the gold medal for both 100 meters and of course the 200 meters well you know congratulations to Gina Bass, I, I you know, think we, we owe Gina Bass the congratulations <laughs> we definitely owe Gina Bass the congratulations you know congratulations to Gina Bass you know for you know waving the flag of the Gambia you know to its higher heights you know now you know take us through you know the journey from uh, the, the you know the you know the qualifiers you know to the semi-finals and of course to the finals for of the you know the athletics well um, athletics started um, a little later um, uh, when football went uh, almost uh, towards the end of the fourth round and uh, entering some away in the semis. Then athletics uh, came, the heat started on a Monday. Before the athletics started, um, the under 20 got eliminated from the championship. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know how will it, be, uh, it will be, but I am very much hopeful that we're going back to Banjul with at least a medal or two. If you're not going to get it somewhere, I believe Gina Mariam Basbite will surely get us a medal. I don't know whether it will be gold, silver or bronze, mm -hmm. but she will definitely get us a medal. And um, she was the first one to be on the tracks um, on Monday. Um, she started the heat. She finished first mm -hmm. and I was like, yes. The journey has started, mm -hmm. and I know she will get us. She will get us a medal. It was a journey of first, first, first. Yes, first, yes. First. <laughs> <laughs> she finished first in the heats. Yeah. Then the semifinals came. She finished first. Mm -hmm. Then the finals. When she finished first in the heats and semifinals, I already concluded that yes, there is a gold medal already oh, yeah, in the hundred yeah. meters. Mm -hmm. Because um, looking at those who were also taking part in the other heats, um, you look at the, the the timing and you look at um, the the, yes. the pace and you look at Gina's timing, mm -hmm. you will understand that yes. Gina will absolutely shake up this challenge and go home with the uh, gold medal. And uh, the closest challenger to her was uh, McCoy of Liberia. She was also taking part in the uh, African Games for the first time. And Olayinka Olajide of Nigeria, she was also uh, doing very well for Nigeria because she was one of those athletes as well who won um, the gold, bronze and silver for Nigeria. And then Gina got to the finals of the 100 meters and uh, she was absolutely magnificent. I was electrifying pace and mm -hmm. she finished uh, first. And then we were all proud um, at the across, uh, at the uh, University of Ghana Stadium, the national anthem was played, mm -hmm. um, courtesy of uh, Gina's exploits. Mm -hmm. And then it was a three or four in the 100 meters. Then came the 200 meters. That was her best, the 200 meters, because she was very experienced and um, managed her timing very well. Because in athletics at times, if you just start with a bang in the force hits, you're giving your uh, colleagues or your challengers the, the, the time and the space to try and adjust to your timing. Mm -hmm. So they will try to make sure they close that gap. But she managed her time very well uh, from the hits to the semis and then to the final. Now going into the 200, um, she did the same. She will always manage to make sure she finished on top. And in the 200, there was one important point that she made reference. That is where, where you have the bend. Mm -hmm. Because you will just start, go to the bend, and when you bend, then you have the time to complete the uh, remaining 100 meters. So she was very much careful on to how she bends and uh, trying to uh, finish uh, that. And coming out force in the hits, then came the semifinals. Because the more you go, the more challenges you have. Mm -hmm. Because in the hits, you uh, separated with uh, different different groups. Then you get to the semifinals, you face order. Okay. 
who yes. absolutely the yes and then the finals is the best of the best mm -hmm. and then um, it was another tight challenge um, the, one of the uh, Congolese girls was absolutely doing very well Ola, Ika, uh, Ola Inka from Nigeria was also doing very well mm -hmm. and then Gina knew that yes um, I have to seek off the challenge from these girls to maintain my crown that I won in the Rabat mm -hmm. and she absolutely uh, did that and she was very very um, careful as to uh, what she uh, say in the interviews because if you say okay I'm going outright to win it you're putting yourself on pressure and she was like let's see what will happen but I will try to do my best to make sure I win this and of course Ola Inka posed a strong challenge but she managed to make sure she finished um, ahead of her and uh, winning two gold medals For the running th six races finishing fourth in all those six races wow. is absolutely something very much commendable and i think gambia needs to gambia needs to celebrate this lady we should not wait um for for her to go and we start saying ah gina movie definitely gina movie definitely let's start celebrating her right now um uh, in her presence and make her realize that gambia really valued you and gambia valued what you have done for this country absolutely taking a delegation of more than 100 people to the african and games and she comes back as the only one with, with two gold medals. Indeed, that's, 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 that's it's the absolutely. point. And then, you know, you know, Gina Maria Mabas is up, you know, congratulations from, you know, the African Renaissance TV team, you know, we send our congratulations message to, you know, Gina Maria Mabas. Now, uh, you know, Gina Mabas came back into the Gambia with two gold medals. What's your reaction to that? Well, I think Gina 20 this year has been an amazing year. I know we are really running out of time. I'm still uh, for our first commercial, so I, would, I think I will take up this position again from you to end it here. But before we do that, um, I think it's amazing. Uh, we all that we can say for now is um, congrats to Gina and then um, her manager and then also uh, the husband. Yes, she's, she's, she's Mrs. Now, so of that course. is a responsibility. That, and then. Uh, aside shouldering the responsibility of the Gambia, she's also um, a beautiful wife now, as it stands. Um, that is quite amazing. But then I think it's not just about the goals that she's bringing to, um, to us and then raising the flag of the Gambia, but then the inspiration, the, the, the hope that he's, yeah, she's giving us, that we know we can go out there, we can go to the world and compete amongst um, every other people. That is, to me, that is it. Indeed, that's a quite that, that's a quite good one. Well, you know, this is what time has given us for the first season of this. You know, we we'll would love to we will we'll have love to definitely, discuss on the top and also other games that they can yeah. participate in. But uh, you know, we'll bring that one back again. You know, I think we will we will we will have to bring Amadou back to <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem to because on those. yeah, some other athletes also did very well. I think Ibrahim Kamara did well. Adam Ajame, the HN, Sam Pierre, mm -hmm. all of them did very well. Um, Nima Kamara as well. But you know, five thousand meters is absolutely very very. Yeah. Challenging. challenging when you face the Kenyans and the Ethiopians, uh, it's going to be difficult for you. is being brought to you here by the Gambian Dutland Consortium. Of course, the Gambian Dutland is playing in the, in the you know the second division league of the Gambia Football Federation. Well, you know when we come back, we'll you know continue the discussion onto that topic. <laughs> Welcome back from the short commercial break. Well, if you are just joining us, this is Africa in Sport here on African Renaissance TV Network with me, Mohammed M. Seliba. You know, my two able you know guests here. Are, uh, I, I am not a guest. I am not a guest. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a guest. I'll give you the title of a guest now. You know, of course, uh, my co-host Mohammed Biba, you know, an independent science. and of course, uh, our special guest, you know, is Amadou Tamba. You know, now uh, we'll move on to the you know the second division in table of uh, the Gambia Football Federation. Now, uh, you know. I'll start with you now. Now, uh, the Gambia Football Federation uh, Second Division uh, team looks uh, interesting. You know, having Hearts FC, you know, you know, extending their, you know, their lead to three, three games, nine, nine, nine points. Well, I think we've said this before, Seba. Um, on the previous um, columns we had here, we discussed on how Hearts has been running away with the with, with the, with the points here, and then everyone else is playing catch up to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a congratulations to them because we initially it was like a hype, it was um, a first uh, phase, in the first phase everyone was uh, that they are doing this, but how well can they sustain this? Mm -hmm. But I think having the um, having this pace, having this run of games and um, winning games in the first and uh, second half of the season has answered those questions that 
Hearts is not here to play. Hearts is not here to make numbers. Mm -hmm. They are not um, an elephant on top of a tree. They are really uh, they are on top of a tree because they deserve to be there because of the results have uh, they have this backing of the results and statistics. Mm -hmm. And this is quite amazing. Having played um, for over 19 games and then lost only two games, it's uh, more than impressive for them. Mm -hmm. It's indeed impressive. And then you know they've not lost a game in the in, the, in their home home ground for now. Now uh, you know Amutamba. You know it's it's quite interesting. We're having a provincial team leading the the table. You know, but how you know how crucial is this for the development of uh, the Gambian football? It's absolutely very crucial, and um, people always talk about decentralization and uh, hearts doing this. Uh, people will realize that uh, football is not only in the greater Banjul areas. Um, it's just that um, players within the greater Banjul areas are opportune to uh, the infrastructures and good pitches, um, even though um, we're still yearning for better pitches in the Gambia. But uh, what we have in the greater Banjul area is absolutely better than what we have in the um, up country or the regions. Um, there is a lot of talent in, in the province and uh, no one will argue that. Even when you go to the um international stage, most of the big players that we talk about today come from the uh, regions. Most of them don't grow up in the uh, capital or so. Um, Hearts have worked very hard to get to this level. Um, I, I watched them play on a couple of occasions. I think they are very young and exciting players and um, I'm not surprised that they are at this stage at the moment. Uh, what, what, what was their result against the Dutch It was a goalless draw. <laughs> I, 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 thought, I thought it was otherwise. No, <laughs> no, it was on our, on our home ground. It was, yeah. The home ground of the Gambian oh, okay. it, was, it was a goalless draw. I, 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 I rest my case. <laughs> it was a goalless draw in Brikama. It, but was, it was an interesting game. Like yes. Definitely. You look at, you look at the team, uh, right now it's not by fluke that they're topping the table because they they have uh, a very good attack, a very potent attack because they've been scoring goals. They've scored about 29 goals. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, to me, I think um, they deserve uh, being on top of the table right now. And you know, in, in football, once you're chasing the league, you look at what your opponents are not doing right and you do it right. Mm -hmm. um, what were Hearts opponents not doing right is when they have the advantage to close the gap on Hearts, mm -hmm. they will falter. Mm -hmm. When half, uh, Hearts have the advantage to open the gap, yes, they capitalize and do it. So that is where the difference is. But it's still a very long way to go. 15 more games to go. He's not yeah, it's, it's, he's not it's a long way to go. Now, we, we have, we have uh, the teams like the Gambian Lions, of course, you know, BK Miller, you know, you know, Hugs. Uh, you know, these are experienced, experienced teams that are following, that are, you know, behind Hearts FC. You know, how, 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 how pressure do you think this will be on the on Hearts? Well, I think um, for Hearts, is, um, they're in a position that uh, they're in a dreamland. This is a position that every other team in the second division wants to be in right now. If anyone is to trade positions, everyone will solely go for what uh, the position that Hearts is in. And like you said, BK has that experience. But we said this before. Um, this has happened to BK before. They've always been ahead and then um, with time, with the yeah, close of the season, you know, they've, they've most of, most of, most of the seasons, you know, they do very well in the first round. So, uh, but I'm interested to know what Dutchland is going to do to play that catch-up uh, game. Yes, so Maybe so, I'm, I'm not going to have a So we'll move on to that. Now, you know, Dutch Lions, you know, have been, you know, they have been scrambling, like I said. They have been scrolling, you know, for, you know, the past two games, they have not, uh, you know, they have not done well in the, in the last two games. Yeah, um, I think it got to do with the players' mentality and um, what we uh, need to do to uh, make sure we get the result. Um, look, with due respect to all other teams in the second division, I think Gambian Dutch Lions have talent in abundance. Mm -hmm. um, every department that you go to, um, it's, it's well stock. Mm -hmm. Goalkeeping department, the defensive department, the midfield, the attack is absolutely well stock. But I think the reason why we are in the fourth place is we're not taking our chances. Mm -hmm. Creativity is not our problem. We have the best defensive record in the league. We only considered 10 goals. That's and we, quite an impressive one. Yes, a very impressive record defensively. Mm -hmm. And we have the best goalkeeper in the league. He has kept about 10 clean seats. Mm -hmm. So that speaks volume of our defensive aspect. Mm -hmm. Now you go to the attacking department, we only, we only scored 16 goals. So it speaks volume. That means we scored 16 and considered 10. Of a we have a plus six. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that we definitely need to score goals. Mm -hmm. And again, I think where we also um, finding it difficult is teams that we go all out and say, oh, come on, this team cannot stand in front of us. It's absolutely three points in the back. Mm -hmm. Those are the games that we fall down. Sure. A game, the game against Gunjur, mm -hmm. the game against Jam City, 
um, the game against Wagadugu. <laughs> no, that's the, I guess that's the, oh, that's my goodness. <laughs> All those games should have been maximum three points for us. But at the end, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a bitter pill to swallow. Coming out of those contests and picking up a point or losing the maximum points mm -hmm. is absolutely crazy. But we trust in the coaches that we have. We trust in the materials that we have, being the players that we have. Mm -hmm. And I know the coaches will also try to at least adjust in uh, one area or two. And we're very much hopeful that the remaining 50 games will absolutely do ourselves good mm -hmm. to be up there. Now, you know, uh, the last game of Gambia that was, you know, against, uh, uh, you know, the Carnifing Estate, you know, this, this, you know, used to be a tense game, you know, because, you know, looking at the Carnifing Estate, we played against them at Bekama. You know, I'm using we, you know, part of the Gambia that's there, well, because, you, you, you are <laughs> part of the Gambia now. <laughs> a part of this program is part of Gambia that's there, so, I can say. So, uh, now, you know, you know, they drew, the, you know, against uh, Carnifing. How, you know, how do you see that game? Well, the, the game against Carnifing uh, was not going to be an easy game. Um, that I said before the game. Like uh, the game against uh, between Dot Lions and Carnifing East will, can be comparable to Gambia Dot Lions against um, BK Milan, for instance. There is that um, inside uh, derby that most people don't see from the outside. Mm -hmm. So the game was going to be a tough game for them. But then um, over the case, I think. Um, like he said, to me, uh, when you look at the Medot Lions for their lap, these uh, last four games, for instance, the results have been disappointing with them. They played football, they played well, but then, like he said, football sometimes is not just about um, putting in that effort, but then it's about capitalizing on those opportunities when they present themselves, which they are really not doing that. Yeah, and that's this work on that. That's in the, like, for example, when you look at the game against Jam City, you know, we have, uh, you know, the first 20 minutes, we have, you know, over, over three clear chances that we, that they miss. Now, uh, moving on, you know, the next game of Gambia and Dutch Lions is uh, in the FF that is uh, against TMT. You know, what's the what's our expectation? What what should we look out for? Well, I think um, that game, if there is any team that will be under pressure, it will be TMT. Um, why? They're in the fourth division and uh, we are in the second division. There is a difference um, with that. Um, I am not the coach, but uh, as somebody speaking from the communication department, I think one is we're going there to respect them because they are ahead of us and we will definitely respect them. And uh, that will not stop us from playing um, our system. But we have a system, the coach has a philosophy and the players um, are absolutely trying to understand what the coach wants them to do mm -hmm. and I'm very much sure that they will do that and you look at the global stage when it comes to football cup matches are where smaller teams always cause upset mm -hmm. and at Gambian Dodge Lions we are very much hopeful that we can go to the Brickham Box Bar Mini Stadium that is our home ground mm -hmm. against a very motivated TMT side mm -hmm. and we are also fully motivated to go out there and try to cause an upset and get ourselves into the next round of the FF Cup mm -hmm. but the mentality has to be uh, there the players have to be very much stable um, psychologically to know that yes um, TMT are, are ahead of us um, but we can match them we definitely can match them once we have that belief we can take the game to them and who knows there might be an upset and we hope that there will be an upset. <laughs> we hope so. You know, that's an expectation. You know, now, uh, uh, you know, what do you think should be done? Well, I think the government of Lions, um, one advantage they have um, in this match is that um, the fact that they should not be pressured. Um, they are not under pressure. They are um, technically going to be considered as underdogs because I'm uh, looking at the, the league differences. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is TMC's games to lose. And with that, I think that is what uh, that is what presents an advantage to the Dutch Lions. And then they took cut in on this. Um, going through the FF Cup would really give them that uh, needed um, confidence to have a run of games, a run of winning games in the, in the league. So I think that is all for me. And it's important because time is uh, really of the essence. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, we take our, 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 you know, our final statements. You know, you know, what, what, what final statement do you have? Well, um, thank you very much. Keep up the good job because this is what Gambia needs. Um, we need to promote our game. Um, and uh, you're definitely doing a very good job. I have to commend you guys. And at Gambian Dot Lions, um, we, we have a dream, we have a target, and uh, hoping and praying that all the players are focused and uh, injury free. All of them is um, all of them are fit, and we get to our dreamland because we are abs uh, absolutely working very hard to be up there. And then it's a pleasure to uh, be with you guys on this platform. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. And then I believe and hope that you know the Gambian Dot Lions will be in that dreamland uh, very soon. Now, Thank you. Know, you. What, what's your final? Well, my final thing today would be I think I'm. Um, Tamba, Tamba is, uh, is an asset to the Gambia. He's, uh, he's been an ambassador to the, uh, the Gambia, and then we should be proud of him and the likes of him um, have been in our midst. I mean, 
this is an example from coming representing us in Ghana. That was um, we virtually we were getting everything that we got from Ghana, everyone in the country here through him and um, some of the people that are really doing the same um, jobs that he's doing. And that is amazing. Aside that, he's also been uh, doing wonderful job in the, with the radios, and we've seen the same thing. A uh, club like Dodgelands, for instance, is benefiting from his services. So, and I would also want to say um, this show is also. Um, really proud to have him here and we're looking forward to having him come uh, someday maybe a permanent member of this uh, panel here yeah, it's, it's going to be an amazing part of it thank you i think now it will be a competition between him and sal yes now uh, you know yeah, well viewers you know this well viewers you know you know thank you for joining us up to this stage and then this is what time has given us you know here today you know just to remind you this program is being brought to you by the gambian.learn fc gambian.learn as, as far as we discuss here today they have uh, they are playing their trade on the you know the second division league of the Gambia Football Federation sitting fourth on the table after game day 19. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram and all other social media platforms on Africa Renaissance TV Network. I have been your host here on Africa in Sport, Mohamed M. Seriba. Bye from us.